So out of the very many complaints you would hear from Nigerians, one that stands out is the complaint of fuel prices being very high. And in this video, somebody exposes the fact that the removal of the fuel subsidy was a scam and there was nothing like fuel subsidy to start with. So what are they removing? It's going to be an interesting video. I had seen the video in its entirety already, but I thought I should bring it to the channel. Usually I try not to bring this videos to the channel because they are really close to my heart you know i'm nigerian and when i see these things it breaks my heart but we're going to check this one out because we have to learn and i have to start bringing more of these videos to the channel but check it out so yesterday we're trying to compile a list this list the list of emails and phone numbers of all the major oil marketers so that we can send an email to them to give us feedback on whether or not they received for subsidy from 2016 till 2023. As I was preparing that list, the list was ready. In fact, we have drafted the, drafted the email, just about sending the email when I got a message from a friend of mine. And when I opened the message, what I saw really shocked me and annoyed me. Because when we're talking about the fact that there was no need for whole, this whole first subsidy removal in the first place. Many people, many people were calling us all kinds of names. And if you go into the mainstream media space, what you hear is so-called oil and gas experts that appear to be paid to come and start talking about how first subsidy was unbearable for government to bear that government could no longer sustain it. And in fact, every time I heard this, I was always annoyed. Honestly, I thought so too. I didn't know. That's why this video was so shocking to me. I thought fuel subsidy removal was going to be for the betterment of Nigeria or Nigeria's economy or for the people or something. I just felt optimistic about it. I thought it was going to be good. I think I might have even stated in one of my videos that it's a good thing that fuel subsidy is removed if it's used for the right things. So I felt good about it. And then I saw this video. Because from the documents that we, ex we obtained about the DSDP arrangement, we knew, and that was when we came out and said that there was no full subsidy payment and that NMPC had not paid any subsidy to anybody. Yet, the Tinubu administration kept insisting that subsidy had to go. And we kept insisting. If there was no fuel subsidy in the first place, if the whole fuel subsidy regime was a fraud, what is the whole point of increasing the pump price of fuel? To so fuel subsidy was not removed, but the pump price of fuel was increased. Pay attention, this one is going to be a shocker to a lot of you. Deal lot with of the fuel subsidy that was a fraud. What is the point? If the fuel subsidy did not exist in the first place and some people were collecting money in the name of fuel subsidy and they were coming out openly, according to what the former governor of Bauchi State st said, they were coming out in the Asso Rock Villa to meet President Buhari to say that they were tired of making money, of stealing Nigeria's money, that they should remove fuel subsidy. If they knew that the fuel subsidy did not exist, and people were just raising invoices to collect fuel subsidy. If they knew that that was the case, how is increasing the pump price of petrol to make life difficult for average Nigerians? How is that fuel subsidy removal? When what should have been done would have been to go after those that were collecting Stole the, the money. subsidy fraudulently right. to return the monies that they have collected. Mm. That would have been the solution. But we were not looking in that direction. I was determined to make sure that we got to the bottom of it and exposed everybody that was involved in the forced subsidy regime. We have done a list, a compilation of their email, contact email addresses, and then their phone numbers. So we're going to call and also send them an email. And if they don't respond to the email, we're now going to... We also did a compilation of the addresses. We're going to send them hard copy letters, after which we're going to take them to court. Because we wanted to get to the bottom of it. So what did we do? Right at the point where we're about to send the emails was when I got this message about a probe by the House of Representatives. 
The House of Representatives ad hoc committee investigating the subsidy regime payments from 2013 to 2022 has just has said that the profiles of 23 oil companies trading in Nigeria are not known, according to data from the Corporate Affairs Commission. The chairman of the committee, Honorable Mustafa Ibrahim Aliyu, at the resumed hearing of the committee with a couple of oil companies in attendance to explain their role in the deal with the Nigeria National Petroleum Company, NMPC Limited, said that they have serious questions to answer. Aliyu, who read the list containing the names of the individual companies, explained that a communication from the Corporate Affairs Commission, CAC, on the request of the committee came back without any information on the affected companies. At the bottom of that document was a statement that was shocking to me mm -hmm. and annoying to me. So when I said that there was no forced subsidy and all the evidences came out to corroborate that fact that there was no forced subsidy in the first place and that there was no need to increase any pump price of petrol, because even with the old price of 185, 195 naira per liter, NMPC was already making a profit of over 100 naira per liter. At 195, NMPC was making a profit of over 100 naira per liter. Imagine the, that. 195 and they're making 100, which means ideally, even if they sold it for maybe 100, they will still be making profit. Studies are there. The empirical data are there. In the document that was done, that was presented by uh, Dr. Agbo, it was stated there clearly. But since nobody will believe, since mainstream media will not believe, and the Tinubu administration kept pretending as if there was a forced subsidy that they removed, we continued, only to find that the House of Representatives had set up an ad hoc committee to investigate this whole DSDP arrangement of the NNPC. This is the one that broke my heart. The whole, the entire House members knew and everybody kept quiet. And I'm like, everybody's fighting corruption. So we heard. And the whole, not even one person blew the whistle or anything. <laughs> oh my goodness. He's, he's appalling. Just watch. Pay attention. Set up an ad hoc committee to investigate this whole DSDP arrangement of the NNPC. And they had investigated this subsidy regime. And they came to some conclusions and part of it is this annoying one that i'll read to you right now that tinubu was made aware of that buhari was made aware of yet they still went ahead to dance to the tune of the world bank and imf to increase pump price of petrol to privatize to devalue nigeria's naira to increase the school fees of university and unity schools in the name of signing the student loan bill to privatize nigerian company in the name of signing electricity bill they were just doing all manner of policies to play and dance to the tune of the imf and the world bank they still went ahead despite knowing what i'm going to read to you now look see from what he said right i mean i don't know this for sure but it sounds like a globalist agenda because if you're prioritizing the interests of a of a global organization rather than the interests of your people that seems to me like a globalist view don't you think so it's it's heartbreaking earlier the committee quizzed representatives of sahara energy resources limited Oando PLC, Hyde, and AA Rano, where they took turns to explain contract deals with the NNPC, saying they only lifted crude oil in the direct sale, direct purchase scheme and were not part of the subsidy payment. The oil marketers that were part of the DSDP arrangement, these companies I just mentioned, the Oando, a. A. Rano, Sarah Resources Limited, they were part of the DSDP arrangement. Now they have come out to say, oh, we only lifted crude oil to give to the refining component of their consortia. And then this consortia brought back refined petrol to give to NMPC, which NMPC now sold to them that they were not part of any fuel subsidy payment. So what we were even going to send out emails for for them to confirm to Nigeria, not they have already confirmed to the House of Representatives Ad Hoc Committee 
that they were not part of any subsidy payment. So, the House of Representatives already knew. Mm -hmm. The chairman of that House of Representatives, Honorable Mustafa Ibrahim Aliyu from Sokoto State, is still a member of the 10th National Assembly. He's still there. The whole National Assembly, they were aware that there was no fuel subsidy payment made. They were. Oando PLC is headed by Wale Tinubu, Tinubu's nephew. Definitely, Tinubu is aware. From what the former... That one already has been on the media everywhere. I saw it on him. Is it Hindustan time? I just saw a picture of Tinubu. I'm like, and then I saw a big text, nepotism. Then I went to read about it. That's when I hear this. Uh, when I heard this... Um, Wale Tinobu being the petroleum is in minister. It's Nigeria to me is shocking the things that happen in Nigeria and it's it shouldn't be happening. I'll just word it like that. It shouldn't be happening. Governor of Bauchi said Buari is aware. So Buari is aware, Tinobu is aware, and they still chose to increase the pump price of petrol in the name of fuel subsidy removal that did not exist. How wicked can a person be? How wicked can a government be? How wicked? Tinobu knew that there was no fuel subsidy made. Tinobu knew. APC knew. In fact, PDP knew. The members of this tent NAS, they knew. They were the ones that conducted the ad hoc committee Senate hearing to prove fuel subsidy regime. They were the ones that conducted it and came up with this conclusion where they were told categorically by Sahara Energy Resources, Oando PLC, A.A. Rano, that they were only involved in lifting crude oil in the direct sale, direct purchase scheme, that they were not part of the fuel subsidy payment. These are the same major marketers whom NMPC claimed that they paid subsidy payment to. These same oil marketers have come to say that they did not receive fuel subsidy. They have come out to exonerate themselves. So if the marketers that are responsible for this DSDP arrangement say they did not receive fuel subsidy, who received it? Who then did NMPC pay fuel right. subsidy to? Who then did the federal government pay those 4.2 trillion in 2022, the 3 trillion in six months of 2023? Trillions. Trillions, guys. He's not making he's not making mistakes. He's not missing words. Trillions, guys. Trillions. The three trillion of 2021 and the is it one trillion of 2020? Who did they pay those monies to? And rather than go after the people who fraudulently collected those money, the Tinubu administration innocence. thought it best to punish Nigerians by increasing the price of yeah. That video, when I saw it, I'm just like, this better not be true. Like, it's it's something you don't want to believe. I still don't want to believe it, even up to now. And I just hope everything he's saying there is false. Um, I just hope everything he's saying there is uh, maybe exaggerated or out of ignorance because it's it's bad. It's bad. And the problem, what makes it even worse is the fact that even with this out now, a lot of people would know the entire Nigeria would watch it. Nobody's going to be held accountable. Nobody. I think it was Donald Duke who said something the other time in an interview. He said the problem with Nigeria is there are no consequences. And I do agree. All these things we know, like even though even though we didn't know about this precisely, we know that there's something fishy that might be going on. But it's like mm, nothing is going to happen. Who's going to pay the money? Where are you going to get the two trillion, three trillion? Where are you going to get it from? It's crazy. Yeah, it's going to break your heart. It broke my heart, but I thought I should bring it so we can see. Um, hopefully, something is done about it. And all the money that Nigerians are paying right now, the pump price that Nigerians are paying right now, where is it going? Where is it going? We want to know. Like, does the government tell um, Nigerians about the budget? I don't know. I, I don't think I've seen a, a statement where the budget is outlined. Like, in 2023, this is how much we made. And this is how much we spent on education. This is how much we intend to spend on this sector of health and uh, infrastructure development. Like, I don't know where that document is. It should be made public because this money that you're taking from Nigerians now, I'm getting too emotional. I should, I should even shut up. Like I should shut up so I don't over say things. That's why I don't like to bring all these very 
personal videos to the channel like this feels like a family video <laughs> i'm heartbroken anyways let me know what you guys think about that um i saw this content on tiktok i don't particularly know the name of the journalist i would like to you know you know shout him out or give a link to his um, instagram so you can go follow him but I, I particularly don't know if you know and you want to share please tell us in the comment section but i saw it i thought i should bring it to the channel because i think it's good information my major problem is our accountability how can all these things happen and nobody is accountable for it these people they'll steal one trillion one a eh, eh, one tri <laughs> what what do you want to use it for how many cars or houses do you want to buy and live in? Hey, my guy. Anyways, that's just shut up. Like I said, smash the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.